I have been thinking of getting a laser in the shop for about a year or so now. I've been looking at all these different brands. And then I got an email uh, offering to send me a 10 watt longer laser. I'm like, that's fantastic. I've been thinking about getting one. And then they came back, so, oh, well, you don't have one. We'll send you to five. So to tell you the truth, I was a little disappointed. Really wasn't expecting a lot from this laser. So while I was waiting, I went ahead and bought a 20 watt, one of the more higher end lasers, and it cost me about $1,300. And I've been using that for about a month or so now, so I got some experience. And then I got this laser in the other day. I'm not going to make you go through the whole assembly here. Uh, there's tons of videos out there, but I'll tell you, this is the second laser I put together. And I set this little timer up. Now I stopped partway through because I wanted to take the little control module apart and see just what kind of board this laser has in it. And I still had it completely put together within 38 minutes. So that's not too bad. It's uh, very well packed. All the pieces were labeled very well. So assembly, even if you have zero experience, won't take you very long. Now that's one of the things that I really like about this one. The more expensive laser I bought, everything's kind of proprietary. This one is all open source. Uh, I looked at the card, the little board in here, and now this is the uh, MakerBot board. And there's other lasers that use the same exact board that actually have probes where it can automatically set the Z, you know, your focal point on the laser. It also has slots for end stops. Now this laser doesn't have the end stops, but after using this for the last couple of days, I don't even know if you really need that, but it is nice to know that there is a slot on the board if you wanted to add those features into this laser. One of the things that I wanted to be sure and point out right here is when you put the carriage on, it's got these three wheels. There's two wheels on the top and one wheel on the bottom. It's the same as a 3D printer if you're familiar with what they call an eccentric nut on there. So the bottom where there's one wheel, that wheel has got a hole in it that's off center. And you rotate the, uh, it's got the little wrench that comes in it, but you slip up behind the wheel and you'll notice that it's different than the two wheels on the top. And you can rotate that wheel and that's how you take up the slack and get the adjustment out. It's not really said in the instructions. The instructions are only eight steps. It's real simple to put this thing together. Um, and it said something about adjust the wheels, but it didn't say how. So in my experience, what you want is you want the wheel be snug enough that if you try to spin it with your fingers, it won't spin, but you don't want to crank it down so tight that it's squishing the wheel. So basically, you know, reach over there and see if you kind of really twist on it a little bit, the wheel should kind of turn but it shouldn't just freely spin. Another thing I really like about this printer is that the legs are a flat piece of metal. And so you'll see when I do my printing, I have a honeycomb bed. And I was able to take my honeycomb bed, I think it's a 500, uh, 450 millimeter bed. It's one that I already had from my other printer, but it's wide enough that I can slide it against both legs and that's going to make sure that that honeycomb bed is square with the printer. And then I can lay my wood straight up against the edge. And that way I know that the board or whatever I'm trying to engrave or cut is placed on the machine nice and square. So another great feature that this machine has that I really liked. So on the SD card, there's a video of how to put this together. And also there's a uh, you know, full man, uh, manual. And then there's a suggested speeds for the laser. And it's for the five, the 10 uh, watt one. It's got both of the settings. Um, I find that they were way off. So first thing you gotta do when you get a laser is go ahead and try to do some testing. So I have a piece of quarter inch, just um, glue on sub floor that I use, you know, it's a good board. You know, it gives you a kind of a ballpark of what the machine will do. So I started out and you can see in the bottom corner here, um, 
on some basic settings and it was just burning the board up. So I went ahead and put my test grid and, you know, the first one up there on the top left was how it came just out of the box. You see, there was a lot of scorching to it. So this being the five watt, they don't make a air assist for the five watt. So I had to modify a 3D printed version of the 10 watt to make it fit onto this laser. Well, I'm going to go ahead when I have time and design one up for this five watt laser. And I'll put the link down in the description um, to a printables or Thingiverse uh, site uh, to get it. But I went ahead and I looked at the paperwork and it's saying, you know, 2000 millimeters a minute. Well, when you go to the ads, it was saying 10,000 millimeters a minute. So, you know, I kept running these grids up and running them up. And, you know, it surprised me enough that at 10,000 millimeters a minute, the thing was still putting down uh, some pretty good uh, engravings. So I didn't go over the 10,000 millimeters a minute. And a lot of my engraving I did, I cut back to about 9,000 millimeters per minute, depending on what I was doing. But I'm going to show you here. It is it's just a fabulous little printer. It's only five watts. I was expecting it to be a quarter of what my 20 watt printer um, laser would be. But I don't know what it is, but this little five watt, it was cutting um, the quarter inch board with no problem. And, you know, at 9,000 millimeters a uh, minute, it still was making some fabulous engravings. As you can see here, this is the test grid. The bottom row is 10,000 millimeters a minute. And, you know, yeah, at 20%, it wasn't putting out, but at 50, 60%, it still was doing a pretty good engraving. And so later on, I'm going to show you some pictures that I done uh, I did some uh, dither of a uh, of AI photo, and I was running that at about 6,000 millimeters a minute. And uh, regular engravings, I was running up to about 9,000 millimeters a minute. So I definitely wasn't expecting the machine to put down this precision of lines at this speed. I really... I'd expect it, you know, if you look at the sheet that comes with it, it's saying 2,000 millimeters a minute. And I'm running four times that speed and still getting almost perfect engravings. So we see that this is engraving pretty good, but what about cutting? So I had kind of anticipated this thing only being able to cut like 16th or 8th inch uh, wood. But again, we're using uh, quarter inch underlayment here. And I'm running my test grid with, uh, I think I started at 500 and went up to 1,000 millimeters per minute, going from you know 20 up to a 100% uh, power. Now, normally, I try not to run 100% power. And so, like with the test grids above, I look at around 80 to 90%, usually 90% power and try to find the block that is the right amount of car that I want. And then I go with that speed so that I can run it just under wide open as far as the power of the laser. So I don't actually prematurely wear the laser out running at 100% constantly, but then I'm also getting the fastest speeds that I possibly can because with the dual belts on this thing, I had zero issues with any kind of misalignment or skipping or anything like that. So, I mean, the machine ran flawless. I've probably put close to 15 to 20 hours on this machine in the last two days. And I'd say I have not had any issues because of the machine. Any issues I had were just basically of uh, user error. So you can see here at about 600 millimeters a minute, the seven passes, it was almost to come through eight passes. It fell through. So 
what I would do is I would set up at 600 millimeters a minute at nine passes, and I have no issue cutting quarter inch. Obviously, anything less than that will cut easier. Now that we've got our settings figured out, let's go ahead and show you how I actually would do a print job. You see how I've got my honeycomb bed pushed up against the front leg. So that makes the edges all square with the machine. And so you see, I just stuck the SD card into the machine. I don't have to have my laptop hooked up to the machine. So then I go right here and there's a button you push and it's adjustment and it'll turn on the laser. And so what I've done was I had measured out and put a small pencil mark on the center of this board. When I did the picture in light burn, I put the uh, origin in the center of the board so that, you know, whenever, and then I put it to print from where it's at. So then I can just line up the laser to my little spot on the middle of the board and hit print. And basically this thing takes off and prints. I can go and do other stuff in the shop. I can work on my laptop. I can, you know, write other files for my other printers. I can use the laptop for my expensive laser because if you're not using their proprietary software, you can't use the Wi-Fi, uh, the SD card, you can't put anything on it. You know, all you can do is basically you have to have a laptop hooked to that printer at all times. This printer is just so easy because of this SD card. You know, that is one of the good features. And then I'm going to show you a couple more features here in a minute. Now, since my birthday is June 8th, you know, if anybody wants to send me a present, that'd be terrific. But um, I'm a Gemini. So this picture is a, a, a generated a zodiac sign for Gemini. It was a free, you know, but if you've got an account to set up there with the AI or know somebody who does, so, so you're not selling the right material, you're getting new generated material. And, you know, the detail in this thing is just absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, you can see the individual hairs and the quality. So, you know, I'm not using any of these fancy programs. I know a lot of people do all this fancy stuff. I'm just using plain light burn. You know, um, I got this uh, image that came in you know, from the AI generated and I put it in the light burn and just did it it and, you know, use uh, maybe, you know, 30 seconds of editing to kind of uh, bring out the background and um, put it into print. And this thing took off and printed, you know, I thought was just absolutely um, amazing for, the price of this printer to be able to get this detailed and this quality. So now I'm running at, I think it was uh, 6,000 millimeters per minute and I had a maximum of uh, 80%, you know, I went from 20 to 80% on my power. And I can say, you know, you'll see at the end, this thing is just absolutely a gorgeous picture. So you kind of see there's like a little burnt line now, this is just a piece of scrap board I picked up off the floor of the shop, and there was two small lines, and it looks like there was a board that had been uh, set on top of it. You can see right there by my thumb, and then another one right up at the top. So I do not think at all that that was caused because of the printer. Uh, I believe that was just something that was on the board that uh, made it burn just a little bit hotter in those areas. But I mean, for the price of this, is just ridiculous. So now we got the wood out of the way. So let me grab some slate. You know, let's see what it'll do with the slate. So the first thing you got to do is go ahead and run the test patterns and see just how fast this machine can print. Well, once again, I was highly impressed by, you know, there was zero issues with quality. But I ran my first slate, and which is what I was expecting, but every single square was very dark, you know, well printed in. 
So I ended up with a second burn test on it at a higher speed to see. And I think I went all the way up to uh, nine to 10,000 millimeters per minute. And uh, it was still just an absolute perfect burn at these high speeds with no issues whatsoever. Now, I mean, you can see right there at 30% power at 10,000 millimeters a minute, it's still a great engraving. You know, um, I ended up, uh, did my engravings at 9,000, just trying to stay away from that full 10,000. But man, this was crazy how good this printer was uh, engraved. All right. I'm just going to show you another one of my processes on how crazy simple this machine is. So you set that button right there under adjustments and it puts that laser on 3%. So I've got this board. I already set up a template in my light burn and I put some four inch squares and then I got a dot right in the middle. So those four inch squares are burnt on the board so I can take these posters and I just line them up with the little marks that are already burnt into the board. And then like I bumped it there, so no big deal. I get it squared back up and then I hit the, you know, adjust again, you know, turn on 3% so it doesn't burn anything, but it shows you where the machine is. That way you can get it exactly lined up perfectly. So then you go back on your machine and go to tools and the Wi-Fi, and then on your screen comes up a IP address. It's, you know, the 192.168.1, you know, whatever the address is that your router has assigned it. So now that you've got that IP address, you come over here to Lightburn. And unfortunately, I, you know, didn't have the screen up to see it, but on the right-hand side, it's like save G-code. So I've got my little thing here. I hit save G-code, and then I just open up a, you know, Chrome browser, put in that IP address, and then it logs right into the printer. So here it is, the printer's logged in, and then I can click on the SD card and then upload, and then I just go and select that file that I just saved in Lightburn where I said save G-code, and then boom, it pops right up here on the screen, and I hit upload, and then I hit print. So now I've just uploaded the file to the printer, and then I just shut my laptop off and go do something else, and the printer is printing. You know, I mean, it cannot be any easier than that. So you have where you can send this over Wi-Fi. There's an app on your phone. You know, now, unfortunately, I don't have a way to really to edit uh, on my phone. Uh, I use the light burn on my laptop. But I really hate it having to have my laptop tied up, you know, to the laser. You know, if I have a big burn, you know, an hour or two, I can't do anything on my laptop. Well, with this one. You know, I can sit there, hit it to, you know, do the burn, and then I can go ahead and set up the next machine. You know, um, I'm kind of regretting that I got that big one. I really uh, would love to have got the 10 watt or even the 20 watt, you know, longer has a 20 watt laser, and it is probably 50, not 50, maybe 35% cheaper than one of the uh, more, the one that I got that's a 20 watt one. And, you know, I could have almost got two of their 20 watts. And if their 20 watts are anywhere near the quality of this 5 watt, you know, that's going to be a crazy good deal. Since it's done everything else so good, I went ahead and I uh, pulled out this piece of quarter inch leather I used to use to make in radio belts in the fire department. And, you know, this thing, again, it started just, you know, engraving perfect you know the speeds that it was going at i mean this thing you know you could get some beautiful engravings on it now i did find that when i tried to cut this leather you know i sliced the cut pattern open and it went about the same depth you know with like three passes and 10 passes i even went up to like 15 passes and it just could not penetrate all the way through doing about three sixteenths of an inch and that was it. And so it was unable to cut the leather. But again, this is a five watt laser. I uh, never even was going to plan on trying this because I didn't think that it was even a chance that it would do it. But it has performed so good in every other thing I did. And I figured, you know, what the heck, let's try it and see what happens. This is a quick engraving I did on the leather. Again, I'm running 
I think 9,000 millimeters per minute. And I was only running about 40, 50% power. And down the bottom, you can see it just was perfect. But also you can see on the left how the leather, it's warped and I didn't stick a magnet on it. It was so thick, the magnet wouldn't hold it down. Um, you know, typically what I would have done is wet it and laid it out flat and then let it dry. And that way I would have had a nice solid with this thick leather like that because it's just so stiff that it wouldn't, you know, nothing you're going to put on it really is going to hold it down very well. But anyway, even with that said, you know, while it was printing, you can see right up here where it was out of focus just a little bit. And I think it's actually because I have the air assist on and I've got it turned down really low to where I just barely have air going out of it. I've got the uh, variable speed pump and in that way it keeps any smoke from going back up inside the nozzle and getting my lens dirty. And I think it was keeping it clean and because this particular tip you can see how it's starting to move um you know it was rubbing the leather and so i think it was just kind of holding the soot and the smoke down there and then after i finished though i took just a damp cloth and wiped over it and the whole thing came out perfect again so i really didn't expect this to come out that well but um you know it performed very well so if there's anything else you can think of that you want me to try to cut or to engrave with this little thing, I mean, it's only a five watt laser, but I mean, this thing is holding its own, um, you know, it did everything I asked it to, and it did at extremely fast speed. As you can see, the um, little air assist I've got made on it, I definitely um, need to design something a little better. I had to cut off the clamp that uh, holds it tight and it was just press fit up on there and then with this leather being warped like it was it was just working it so i'm gonna try to get something designed and i'm thinking about making it to where it comes down around where i can put the little field back on it but typically i'm going to have this in an enclosure and the lid's going to be closed while it's running so i don't have to worry about it and it's so close that you know, this uh, nozzle, I'm going to make it 28 millimeters because the focal length is 30 millimeters. So you'll only have a two millimeter gap between the end of the tip and your work surface. And that should keep any of the scatter out. And then with it being in the enclosure with the ventilation, you know, I don't have to worry about any of the light bouncing off of anything. So I try to make this a little different than all the other reviews, give you some real life, uh, you know, of what this machine will do. Here, that first one was with no air. The second one's the same one with the air, going all the way down to 10,000, um, you know, millimeters a minute with the air. And as you can see, it printed good. I got the holes. These are some of my first test prints. This was on the slate, you know, again, going all the way up to 10,000 millimeters a minute. So I'm going to put a link down in the description. Uh, when I get it, I say I don't have one designed right now. Uh, hopefully, I'll get it designed here in the next week or so and get that uploaded. And um, for the uh, air assist, uh, the cable management can use a little bit of uh, work also. So I'm going to try to get some files up on that. And there'll be a link for this if you're interested. Thank you.